Hello, welcome to the Whimsy Stamps YouTube channel. My name is Tammy, plays well with paper, and today I'm guest designing for Whimsy Stamps as part of my Celebrating St. Patrick's Day series. So today I'm really excited because I'm going to be using the toner card fronts from Whimsy Stamps. And I haven't used toner card fronts before. This is my first time, so I'm really excited about it. I have the St. Patrick's Day, of course, toner fronts, and I'm only going to be using this style and this style with all the clovers. I'm saving the horseshoes and the uh, coins for uh, some Disney projects for later on. When you purchase the toner card fronts, you get their A2 size already. You get eight uh, card fronts, so two of each design. And so for me today, I'm going to get four card fronts out of this pack since I'm saving the other two designs. And then once I run the toner through, most of you know that I've done this before, know that if you keep the part that's left over, if you purchase, you know, or you have toner um, cardstock, uh, Whimsy Stamp sells it already in A2 size cut and ready for you. And so I purchased a pack of that to go with it. So I can use the part that doesn't adhere to the designs on here. I can put it on here and then I get eight card fronts for, you know, the same amount of time or effort, basically. I have my foil here. So I ordered iCraft Deco foil and then I already had the Gold Heidi Swap foil. Um, I've only used the mink once and I used it with the toner ink and a brayer on some stamps. So, uh, I asked around and, uh, on the whimsy, if you're not on the whimsy Facebook page, you might want to give that a shot. They have, um, a Facebook page where people post their cards and all of that. Very supportive, warm you know, very enjoyable. So if you're just getting into whimsy stamps or, you know, you're interested or anything like that, uh, look them up on Facebook. I'll put a link in uh, the description to this video. And anyway, I went on and asked and said, which, what setting? And I was told that three is the proper setting. So my mink's all warmed up and ready to go. And I do have the little folder that I'm supposed to put everything in. I keep all my mink stuff together. So let me get set up and ready to go. Let me cut some foil and ooh, we'll start minking. Okay, let's go. I got out my Tim Holtz precision trimmer to cut the foil into A2 sized pieces and it worked really, really well for me. Now I have a precision trimmer on hand and so that's why I reached for it. However, uh, if you have something else or one of the hand tools, just use what you have. Um, I did notice that the mink foil that I'm cutting here was a lot thinner than the deco foil. So I want to be brave, but I also don't want to ruin the two card fronts that I have that I'm absolutely using. So I decided I would practice on one of the coin ones because I can get away with just one coin thing for my Disney project. So here's my little pouch thing. Here we go. Oh my goodness, look at that, it worked. Oh, that is so cool. Oh, this could be addicting. All right. So just, I just think this is going to be super fun to color these. Uh, and for Scrooge McDuck. And I have a picture with him from Disneyland. So I'm going to definitely be using this at some point. That is super fun. Okay. I started 
foiling the other pieces with the green deco foil. So I wanted to do one of each style with the green deco foil and so it turned out great. Both of those actually turned out really, really well. And I was very happy with them. So then I used the gold mink foil, which as I mentioned was much thinner. And I wasn't quite as happy with how they turned out. Um, so these, the first two look okay. But then when I started to use the whole toner front and the leftover bits, you're going to see me kind of try and smooth it out because it, it really just bubbled. And uh, there were parts that didn't seem to adhere. There were a lot of, it was very distressed looking, I'll say that. Uh, and then these, where, where I used the deco foil, really turned out beautifully. So as I looked at all of them, I was, I was happy with the outcome. And then I did a, a, a piece with both just gold and green that I could use behind sentiments. But at this point, I decided I really wanted to do some blending on the white uh, backgrounds. So I decided I would get out my oxides and start blending. So on the gold St. Patrick's card, I used a mixture of cracked pistachio, lucky clover, and pine needles, and kind of tried to do a little ombre look. And then once I was done blending, I took a dry rag and wiped off the oxide so that the foil could show through. And then on the other gold one, I used twisted citron, mowed lawn, and rustic wilderness. On both of the green foiled card fronts, I tried another ombre look with squeezed lemonade, mustard seed, and fossilized amber. And I'm not sure I got a really strong ombre look, but it was fun to try. Now, once I had them all blended, I decided that they needed something else. So I pulled out my trusty tartan plaid stamp, background stamp. And I used the darkest color for each of the card fronts. So for both yellow cards, I used fossilized amber. And I thought it would just give kind of a subtle plaid look to each of them. Rustic Wilderness on that card. And then on this one, the darkest one was pine needles. As soon as the stamping was dry, I went through with a dry cloth, wiped off the excess oxide off of the foiling. And then I decided that I wanted to cut the card fronts with all the shamrocks into some frames. I used the mitered frame die from Whimsy, and then I stamped the sentiment and the focal point from the shamrock swirls stamp set. And here's what I ended up with, four stamps, and I actually had a lot left over from my foiling session. So these, uh, extras will make their way into some projects later on but i'm really happy with the four cards that i did finish so this one with the uh, lucky clover pine needles and cracked pistachio color scheme is fabulous i love how it goes with the gold i did edge it with a little bit of walnut ink distress stain and then this gold one i also inked with a little walnut stain and i think it looks great with the green and then these two with the frames. So this is what the mitered frame die looks like. And then of course I have the smaller inside frames that I can use on other projects. And here is the Shamrock Swirls stamp set that I used for the sentiment and for my focal point. I stamped uh, the card on the right with the Rustic Wilderness, which was the darkest one from the frame. And then the other one, I used the pine needles to kind of go with the foiled green look. And I think they look fabulous. I really like uh, both of them. I think cutting the frames out of the whole shamrock piece really helped. And I like that the plaid kind of shows through as well on these frames. Well, I really enjoyed my first foray into foiling toner card fronts, and I hope that you enjoyed watching as well. If you did, we would love if you would give this video a thumbs up, and we'd love to hear from you in the comments. Have you foiled cards before? Um, do you have some great tips for us? We'd love to hear about your experiences with the toner card fronts and what you have done with them. 
We'd also like to be sure that you're following Whimsy Stamps on all of their social media channels. Make sure that you hit that notification bell so that you know when there are any new Whimsy products or any great new inspiration.